Hello and welcome to this video overviewing univariate and multivariate statistics. I'm Kristen Kinsevich, a doctoral student at Regent University in the Counselor Education and Supervision Program. This video will cover key concepts in statistics, assumptions testing, descriptive statistics, correlation, comparisons of means, analyses of variance, predictive analyses, and factor analysis. Some key concepts in statistics include significance, which shows your likelihood of error. Usually this is set at 0.05, which means you have a 95% chance that you're correct and the likelihood of error would be 0.05 or less. Sometimes if you want to be more sure, you can set your significance level to 0.01, in which case you don't consider your results significant unless you are 99% sure that you are right. A type one error and a type two error means that you're um, making either a false positive or a false negative. The way I like to think about this is a type one error is like if you were standing in a parking lot and you saw someone across the way and you started waving to them frantically because you thought you knew them and then it turns out they're just a random stranger, that's like a type one error because you thought you recognized something, you th thought you had something and it was not true. A type two error is when you're walking down the street and you kind of are looking down at your feet and you walk right by your best friend. There was something there to discover, but you missed it. So that's the way I like to think of type one and type two errors. Obviously, you have variables that you're looking at in statistics. The independent variable is the one that you expect to actually make a difference. Um, it's the thing that you're doing, maybe your intervention or the thing that you think will cause a change. And um, a dependent variable is expected to be altered in some way by that independent variable. Now variance is the average distance from the mean, and we'll talk about that when we look at analyses of variance. Standard deviation is the distances from the mean for the whole sample. So what percentage of people were plus or minus uh, a certain score away from the, the mean? The effect size is the percentage of difference explained by the independent variables. So um, how much of the difference that was found in the dependent variables can be explained by the specific intervention or the independent variable, the thing that you controlled. Parametric data is continuous scales. Um, basically think of this as math works in um, parametric data, whereas in non-parametric data, math doesn't work. So it's nominal or ordinal, meaning um, a number is assigned to it, like a, a yes is a one and a no is a two. Um, that doesn't mean anything in math, but it does mean something when you're ranking or um, assigning a value. So um, if you want to do a mathematical um, test of a score, that's parametric data. And if you want to compare the difference between a yes answer and a no answer, that's non-parametric. And then power is kind of a relationship between sample size, significance, and effect size. And it shows kind of how strong your result would be. Now, assumptions testing, you have to think about why. All of these tests require um, or kind of go on the assumption that you are working with a random sample. And if it's not random, your conclusions might be faulty. So if you think you have a random sample, of children in a classroom and you're measuring IQ, but actually that class um, happens to be the, the gifted children that have been separated from everyone else, then your conclusions are going to be wrong because you, you think that it's random and it isn't. Also, um, all tests have an assumption that your variables are different enough and so they're independent of one another. Um, if you're trying to measure uh, depression and sadness, um, those variables are not different enough, and so you're probably going to have some kind of altered or faulty conclusions because you're, you're calling it different when it isn't different. Now for parametric tests, you have some additional assumptions. Things like normality, which refers to the normal distribution of scores, where you're looking for outliers where, that are very, very different from the mean, or skewness or kurt kurtosis, which would be um, a imbalance um, where it's not a bell curve. Um, so let's say you're, you're testing depression scores and a large percentage of your sample scored a zero. Well, then it's going to be all the way to the left that a whole lot of people got 
a zero, it's going to be very hard for you to um, compare means if or look at analysis of variance if um, that's the case. Now, homogeneity of variance refers to um, the fact that there should be a similar distance from the mean for all the groups. So if you have um, a, a score and you're comparing men and women and all the women's scores are very close to the mean and the men's scores are really spread apart, um, there's probably something in there as that you need to figure out as to why that those scores don't appear the same way. Linearity would be an evidence of correlation. And so for regression or the predictive tests, you would need this as well as analysis of variance. Basically, you have to establish that your variables have anything to do with each other um, before it's going to mean anything or your tests won't be significant. And then homogeneity of regression means that there's a similar slope um, of a distribution of scores for all of the different groups. And so that would relate to the direction of linearity. So if one group, let's say with men, it's a, a certain variable is inversely correlated to the other. And then for women, it's the opposite. And you have one slope going down and one slope going up. Then how are you going to compare those two groups? It's not going to be an accurate comparison. So again, you have to figure out why those scores would be like that. And that might lead to a different discovery, but um, that has to be um, taken into account before you just um, try to calculate something from it. So descriptive statistics are things like demographics, just reporting means or percentages and frequencies, kind of what, you know, how many counselors um, say that they're happy with the amount of supervision they've received. You know, so 73% of counselors say that they are satisfied or whatever. Um, also, chi-square and cross-tabulation can be used for this reason. It can show a number of subjects within a certain subgroup, um, and that's non-parametric. It would be, you know, this many women said yes to this question, um, or maybe yes to A, question A, and no to question B, and how many said yes to question B, but not question A, and how many said yes to both. It kind of creates a little grid um, so that you can kind of divide your um, population into subgroups. And then the binomial test is non-parametric, and that would kind of um, compare, again, you know, the number of people that said yes and versus the number of people that said no or chose option A versus chose option B. And so the assumptions here is just that you have a random sample and independence of variables, meaning you're testing two different things or multiple different things. Correlation um, would be for parametric data, Pearson's R, or for non-parametric data, Spearman's R. Correlation does not imply cause, so we can't say this causes this, but these two variables have a certain relationship. And a perfect correlation would be a one or a negative one, again, depending on the direction of the slope, and it shows a linear relationship. So the assumptions here um, are a normal distribution of scores, meaning it's not not tons of outliers or not skewed, um, you know, where a whole lot of scores are zero or something like that. It assumes a random sample and it assumes independence of the variables. Obviously, correlation would not assume linearity because the whole point of the test is to show linearity. So it'd be strange to have that as an assumption. Um, although I suppose linearity, <laughs> you're assuming that you're going to find linear a re linear relationship if you're, if you're doing a correlation, but um, you don't have to find that ahead of time. That's what the test is looking for. Now, a comparison of means, you do this via um, t-tests, and there are several different kinds. The one sample t-test compares one group to an existing norm. So if you were looking at the MMPI scores of pastors, you would maybe compare that to an existing normed sample that has been already conducted. Um, and so that would be a one sample t-test. Independent samples t-test would be when you have two groups that you are comparing. Um, now, the Mann, Whitney, U, and Wilcoxon tests, those are non-parametric tests with two groups that would allow you to compare um, the differences between, you know, how many people said, you know, ranked this a certain way or ranked uh, another variable a certain way. Um, and so you could still compare those two groups. It's not really comparing a mean at that point, but you're comparing um, differences between groups. Um, the paired samples t-tests 
would look at a within subjects design. So if you did a pretest and a post test or a time series design, um, the each subject would be compared with itself basically. And if you have non parametric um, data in your repeated measures, um, again, kind of a yes or no on a survey, then you could use the McNamara um, test and that would compare groups as well. So the assumptions here, again, would be the normal distribution of scores, uh, random sample, and independence of variables. Analyses of variance, there are several, and they're very similar, but it just depends on how many independent variables and dependent variables you have and whether or not you have covariates. So um, the ANOVA would be um, you're looking for the um, amount of variance, which again is the distances um, from the mean. So you're looking at how varied is, you know, let's say this group of men versus this group of women or um, treatment one group versus treatment two group versus the control. If we look at the variance of scores, so we're not looking at the mean scores anymore. We're looking at the variance away from the means within the group. Um, so if you had one dependent variable um, with one or more independent variables, then that would be an ANOVA. Now, if you have multiple independent variables and multiple dependent variables, that would be the MANOVA. And this is better than just doing a whole bunch of ANOVAs over and over again because it decreases the chances for error. An ANCOVA has multiple independent variables, multiple covariates, and only one dependent variable. And then the MANCOVA has multiples of all of those different independent, covariate, and dependent. And the significance is shown um, in the Wilkes lambda. So the assumptions here, you are looking for a normal distribution of scores. And if you're doing the multivariate tests, then you would have to look at a distribution multivariately, which would be looking at the variance or the distribution at each level of um, the other variables. You would have to have a random sample and independence of your variables, of course. You're looking for linearity ahead of time because if your variables aren't correlated, then you're probably, you know, your test isn't going to make any sense um, because there's no relationship between your variables to begin with. Um, homogeneity of variance or covariance means that there's approximately um, kind of this the same amount of variance within each of the groups. And so there's not a, a group that's wildly different than another and same with your covariates. Um, and then homogeneity of regression, again, meaning that the direction of the slope is the same for all your groups. Now, predictive analyses um, are mostly regressions, but also discriminant analysis. And the terminology changes here where the independent variable is called a predictor and the dependent variable is the criterion variable. And so you're either predicting a score or you're predicting group membership. In bivariate regression, you have one predictor and one criterion variable. And what you're getting is an equation that says, if I know the value on this predictor, then I can guess the value or calculate really the value on the criterion variable. So I get an equation that tells me you know, um, so if it's, you know, I'm looking at um, whether or not um, self-esteem predicts a GPA score, then I could get your self-esteem score on whatever valid measure you were using. And if you gave me that number and I had a significant regression equation, I could fairly accurately predict the person's GPA. On multiple regression, you just have multiple re predictors and one criterion variable. Now for predicting group membership, again, we're looking um, more at kind of categorical data or non-parametric data um, where, you know, group could be like gender, you know, male or female, or it could be, you know, a certain type of um, subject that you have if you have different types um, within your population. So a logistic regression would predict the group after prediction by other factors. So you would kind of have uh, several different steps within your calculation um, and that would kind of um, take multiple um, steps within your analyses. Whereas the discriminant analysis is like the MANOVA in reverse. So whereas the MANOVA is saying, okay, 
um, I know what group you're in. And so how, how does that different differ on these variables? The discriminant analysis is saying, okay, I know these variables are different, so I can then guess what group you're in as a result of that. So the assumptions here are a normal distribution of scores, again, including multivariate normality for the multivariate tests, a random sample, independence of variables, linearity, again, your variables should be correlated in some kind of um, way that makes sense, and then homoscedasticity, which is similar to homogeneity of variance, but it's um, the, the term that's used for regressions um, because it's really looking at kind of um, the amount of like random error or static <laughs> kind of differences for no reason that we can predict or explain. Um, we, you don't want that to be too high or your, you know, your, your equation is going to be kind of all over the place and not accurate. And the last one is factor analysis. This is used specifically for scale construction and it extracts, extracts factors from items on a survey. So it really helps show if your constructs are well-defined, um, multiple factors would correlate to support one main construct. So if you're trying to create um, an anxiety inventory and you say, okay, I am determining that these four things mean you have high anxiety. And so these 10 questions would show me part one or, you know, kind of factor one. Um, and then, you know, part, part two or factor two would be, you know, these 10 questions. So you're, you're basically constructing the scale and seeing, um, does it show um, that those, those answers all kind of go together to support this one idea. Um, and so you're assuming a random sample, independence of variables, linearity, and true correlation, which is, you know, a, another way to talk about linearity between the variables and the factors. So if you're saying, okay, I'm going to uh, create this anxiety scale and some of my questions are going to relate to what you had for breakfast this morning. Well, that might not um, be true correlation between your variables and your factors. So theoretically speaking, it might be flawed in that sense. That brings us to the end, and I hope that you've enjoyed that and understand statistics a little better, and I will see you next time.